Hello, uh, welcome to BOF Live. I'm Tim Blanks, and today we are talking to Sylvia Venturini Fendi in Rome. She has been on lockdown now for how many? Days? Well, from the 8th of March, so it's almost uh, two months. Uh, I, 20, 50 days, I don't know. And you've been kind of in the epicenter. Italy was the. Was, yes. Uh, we were the first to start in Europe, yeah. And of course, uh, it has been quite violent and, and we were the first, so nobody knew what uh, was going to happen. We had to, uh, to lead in a way uh, and, you know, our health, uh, uh, the doc our doctors, Italian doctors are, have been very brave because uh, they have been basically shutting down quite soon, but in, in Rome, the situation was controlled very well. But Milano, where everything started, has been more, more, more difficult, the situation. Very much difficult, more difficult than here in Rome. Do you know, I think it's extraordinary. It's exactly two months since I last saw you at the Fendi show. Yes, because it was uh, one week after, more or less, uh, uh, it was uh, right after the the shows that everything started, you know. I think our uh, our show, yes, because the uh, the day after us, uh, there was the Armani show, and so he decided to to have a to to have a, in shut, do, shut to shut the doors. But uh, I think one our show was one of the last to to be done in, in good conditions. Yeah, I think, and in two months, that only two months, the world is completely reversed. Yeah, yeah, upside down. Yeah, it has been incredible. You know, it's so incredible. Everything go, went so fast and so slow at the same time because we have a relationship with time in those days, but that is very, very bizarre. Uh, a big disruption, a big change, and then we have this sense of uh, days that that are all the same and uh, and, and so different and so uh, all the same and very. They pass quite. Uh, they, I thought they were very slow, but in reality they are not. I think that uh, everything goes fast, but the relationship we have with time in this moment is uh, something very new. And were you, were you able to gather all your family together um, before the lockdown happened? Yes, little by little, because some of us were uh, in Paris, some others were, my, my other daughter, Leonetta, was in London. So I started calling them and saying that we had to be all together and that uh, I thought that the best idea was to Go, come back to, to Rome because the situation in Italy was starting to be uh, difficult. And they, some, my, my daughter, for instance, from London, she didn't understand what I was saying. She said, here is everything is normal. Nobody talks about that. But listen, I, took, I booked a plane. You have to, to take it. And uh, wow, I will talk to, to my professors at the university. And then she said, no, here we are, the university is open, we are staying here. And every day I was booking a new, a, a, a new flight in order to, to, to be ready the day she was ready to leave. And, and then one day I called her and said, listen, I think in Italy are going to close the borders. So this is the last chance you have, please, please. And she then said, okay, but her university was still open. So she left the university and some of her friends said, oh, you are very Italian. Your mother is really the real Italian mother. You are exaggerating things. But after two days, everything shut down also in, in London. So I was very worried. And then the first days when we were all together in the house, we were looking at each other from far. Uh, also the children, uh, I couldn't kiss, her, kiss them, I didn't have the courage to, to, to be close to them because uh, I was coming from, uh, uh, from um, Venice and they were coming from uh, Milan, some of them were from Milano, so it was difficult, we didn't know if we were uh, healthy or not. 
So now, after almost two months, we get along all uh, together. We eat at the same table. We are, uh, we 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 can kiss each other and be safe uh, because we know we are safe and healthy. But the moment one of us will go out, everything will start again. What What does your day look like? Well, I try to have a routine. Basically, I try to wake up always at the same time I used to do when I had uh, my working days. So, and, uh, and you know, uh, you think, you know, it's very bizarre because every time I was thinking during my normal life, oh, imagine if I had uh, the possibility of staying at home one month, how many things I could do. At the end, I don't do anything, you know, <laughs> and uh, I'm just experiencing the, the inaction, which can be, I think, also interesting. I really, I think that inaction and inactivity uh, can be also stimulating. I really wanted to experience the, this moment. Uh, and uh, so I always say, oh, well, maybe after I will... Uh, uh, I will start something, or oh, maybe I will do gymnastic, um, but maybe tomorrow. So there's always time to start doing things. I have phone calls, I have uh, long chats with, uh, with friends and with the studio and people I work with, with my, my, with my team. And uh, we, have, um, we are experiencing time a bit like uh, when I was a child because we have a long con conversation at table, uh, you know, at night, during the day, we have teas. We, I meet my sisters in the garden and we talk about things and we, we, we do games for the children. Uh, Delphine organized a very beautiful uh, um, treasure hunting and we, we do tournament of begemons and, you know, things like that. It's, and then we, 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 we feel the boredom, which is something that we, I, we, I was not used to. And uh, I tell you, and then there are days that I'm very optimistic. And then there are days that I think, no, 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 everything is so bad. Uh, there's no, there's, I don't see a way out. You know, for instance, today I was reading about Singapore, where there is the, uh, uh, apparently many, many cases are, are back there. And I said, oh my God, we are, we are not going to, to, to go out of this situation. But then maybe something uh, after five minutes after, I said, oh, no, no, but everything is going well. And I, as soon as I start, I have to do this, this, and this. And I, I don't, so, and I make plans for, for the next future. So it's very bizarre. I don't know if it's happening to you too, but I have mixed emotions. Very mixed emotions. I think it's happening. There are these very curious phenomena. Um, I've been reading a lot. People are dreaming a lot more, apparently. And, yeah. people, and because they're not doing anything in the daytime, they're, or they're not doing what they used to do in the daytime, they're cramming a lot more activity into their dreams. People say they're dreaming in color more than, more than they used to. That their dreams are like movies with completely developed stories you know very and and it's a very interesting notion that that everybody's worlds have shrunk everybody's physical worlds have shrunk so their mental worlds are, are expanding in some way that's a kind yeah. of that's interesting yes i i i think a lot basically i think a lot that's what i i spend really um, yeah, I, I try to listen to my emotions and, uh, and but, you know, but in a, with, with, but my, my, my emotions are very mixed. So, uh, I, sometimes I feel so full of energy to really fight and for the future of, of, of my kids. And sometimes I feel, oh my God, in what a future they will live. And I think you know so it's difficult and um, I'm not dreaming so much uh, I have to say uh -huh. like not I wish dreaming I could so turn much. my dreams off they're insane <laughs> crazy yeah yeah I say the other night I, I I was working for Bilbo Baggins the Hobbit and he was a crime lord in New Zealand and he wanted to leave his life of crime. So I was helping him leave his life of crime. 
It was like, yeah. a, remember that movie, The Long Good Friday with um, Bob Hoskins? It was like a combination of The Hobbit and The Long Good Friday. But the idea of Bilbo Baggins being a crime lord was quite, um, that's, that's what my dreams are like. I don't want to wake up. I want to stay there and see what Oh, happens. yes, of course. <laughs> uh -huh. No, no, no. But um, then what do I do? I do, I told you, I have a garden, so I stay a lot. You can see how tan I am. Yes, so I do gardening, which is uh, something that I always loved and finally I can do it and I cook. So I play the, the housewife for my children and they're very happy, very happy because it's something that uh, it was, uh, I think it was the, the thing that they always hoped to me to do. You know, because sometimes they regret you were never there, you were never cooking for us, you were always busy working. So now they they can have it. Are you a good cook? Yeah. Yes, yes, I am. Good cook and I like to eat. So yes, I'm I'm good. I'm really I'm really good. Yeah. You know, I think it's interesting. I wonder how interesting it is being in Rome. Uh, while this is happening. This thing that nobody really imagined, nobody in the world would have, well, there are scientists who project, you know, predict these kinds of uh, pandemics, but I don't think yeah. any of us ever thought, my God, this is actually what the crisis is going to be. We, we always think the crisis is going to be something else. But being in Rome, a city which was a center of empire, which, you know, it's it, conceptually, Rome has seen human civilizations rise and fall. Yeah. Do you ever think about that when you're... Yes, when you're yes, of course, of course. And, you know, what is really so peculiar is that really, if you think that uh, uh, all the city in the world, Rome is really the city where you can feel the, the, the connection with the humanity and, and history and time. And so it's uh, to see these... Uh, and this uh, this moment it's a kind of a, a frozen moment I, what what will stay in nothing about this moment in the city there's going to be like a, a void so yeah. it's it, it, it's it's very very i I'm, I'm finding in london anyway it's very hard to see a way out of it at the moment because um I just don't feel we ever get the kind of information that that uh, that would be useful. But I also think maybe the information is so difficult that they don't really want people to start freaking out and panicking. Um, and maybe they're trying to control. I don't know. Maybe that's a conspiracy theory. But I feel that nobody really knows where we're going. Exactly. I feel the same. I feel the same. I feel that they try to to see that they they have a clear vision and that they can handle every situation. But, you know, you can tell that uh, we were not prepared to this. Nobody was prepared, even the, the politicians were not prepared. If you think that uh, uh, easy things like face masks were not there and how, how many doctors, I don't know in England, but here in Italy, many, many doctors lost their life, doctors yeah. and nurses. So yeah. this is something that cannot happen anymore. And yeah. it was uh, a disaster. You know, it's very interesting. After the show, after your show it, on February 20th, we were talking about, um, because that was a show about empowered women. Um, Fendi yeah. shows that always are empowered and women empowered, in this case, in quite a perverse way, as, uh, with the, the notion of the dominatrix, the woman in charge using um, her kind of, sexual power in a way yeah. but afterwards you said that um you felt that what we were even though you didn't want to make a political point in the show you said what we were looking at was the fair in the world was the failure of patriarchal power yeah and when you see how unprepared everybody was and how in certain countries there's still that sense that of confusion and ineptitude and the countries that are doing well are the countries that are run by women yeah i mean that's, that's very, following on from your show i thought that was a very interesting point that's like, very interesting that's very interesting it's like they are taking good care of their children you know 
in a way. They are pre more prepared to, to feel uh, empathy and they probably they've been uh, more organized in, uh, in, uh, in being ready and being there for them, for, for their people. Well, you said, you, said, you said compassion was the thing which distinguished female leaders from male leaders. And yeah, I um, agree. Yeah, I, still I think, think that. We've, we've seen that. When you look back on that show now, two months ago, um, it was one of my favorite shows of the season because it was a proper fashion show. It had everything. It had glorious clothes, fabulous hair and makeup, amazing music. The whole thing and, the, and a very interesting set, like a provocative set, it was a proper fashion show. And we don't, we haven't really seen something like that, I think. Um, we, don't, we haven't seen much like that since the, you know, the heyday in the 90s when there were all those amazing shows. Um, and, and that seemed to be the way that people responded to, 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 to the show, that they were, wow, the hair, wow, the makeup, everything was so perfect. What do you feel looking back on it now? Do you already feel that that's, that's the past? That can never, that kind of thing can never happen again? What do you think with this new consciousness? No, I think that, uh, you know, uh, I think that uh, we have to move on. And uh, so it was not so long ago, this show. So there's going to be, from my, I probably, there's going to be a continuation of that woman and I cannot think that something that was good two months ago is not going to be um, is going to be um, forgotten completely uh, when we go back so my starting point will be always I will start from there to continue probably I will uh, I will use um, now um, I will think about also other issues that before were not involved in when I was thinking about the show. But you know, this, this idea of intimacy, uh, the idea of the, you know, also the site of the show, it was a bit of already probably, uh, you know, the idea of being the show to be in, 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 inside like an intimate environment with those rounded sofas and the idea that the outside was just uh, the entrance with a blue sky it was just the outside and the outside was uh, digital because it was just light i i think that it was already uh, a combination of real and virtual in my mind that i will like to explore even more and uh, and so i you know, lately I've been also obsessed in that show, but also in the previous one, with domestic wear, lounge wear. And it was kind of a, a prediction to me to, to, be, to be inspired by those kind of garments and thinking about now and the moment we are living now. So I think that this show and this, uh, you know, the, the, this show with the the, 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 the pillow sleep. Can you imagine how many hours now we we are on, we are we are on a pillow? So it was it was a, a bit. Uh, I was thinking about that. And I said, oh, maybe um, really it was, uh, uh, and it it was. A, a, I'm not a fortune teller, but a kind of a predictive of what's happening a bit. But remember why you were so fascinated by, by those things, by the sort of loungewear and the, and the boudoir and so on. It's because you felt they were really banal. And so you yes. want to play with Normality. The I wanted to, femininity. but you know how, I'm, how much I'm always been obsessed by normality. And, uh, and I always said that banality and normality is a sort of eccentricity today. And I still think that those are words that I would like to explore even more now because I'm thinking also about the durability of a collection, the durability of a garment, the fact that uh, I think that uh, today um, also fashion has to, to, to have a longer life that we have to, 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 to when, when we 
think about a collection, I would like to have a collection of great basics. So that's why I am saying that my starting point will always be uh, linked to what I've done, also especially two months ago. So I like also to build um, and to uh, to be faithful to my ideas. And I think this is needed today more than before. We cannot get rid of everything every two or three months and start all over again. So, and, and my, my, also my search of normality is also because I think that it's beautiful to have great quality, normal basics, but made, of course, uh, not made with, 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 uh, made for the moment of course so I'm also thinking about uh, uh, reworking on uh, re-editing pieces from the archives I think that all this is uh, is uh, what well, I was it's going to be and it's always been my starting point and it will always be probably but yeah. I'm very very now also interested in technology because uh, um, the future uh, I think that these kind of you know scientists are now my heroes and I think that they're, they're going to be like rock stars they are my rock stars so imagine I imagine to do to to to, to use also you know I'm thinking about uh, curative uh, curative garments can you imagine how many things we could explore now so normal banal things but also with new meanings could be beautiful you froze there for a second. What did you say? What kinds of garments were... were... Medical and oh, curative, oh. curative garments. Curative. This is now... I'm thinking, I was thinking, and maybe I, somebody who is listening to us maybe has a, a, an idea of, or, of how to do it. A pair of shoes with a, with a, mix, with a ray of light or a, like a laser that makes a round in, in, around your feet to, to keep the distance. Well, also, because light disinfects. Light is a natural the, sunlight. Yes, the yeah. UV light disinfects. Yeah. I have yeah. ideas with that also. Yeah. So I, I think that new normality can become a very, um, a very new normality. What do imagine, you... imagine a T-shirt that can detect your blood pressure or a pair of gloves for the oxygen saturation uh, that now it's the new device that we all want to have at home well you know the, the history tells us that 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 catastrophes have always um led to explosions of creativity it's a, it's a curious fact that world war one world war two the, the the great plague um uh the, the plague in the in the middle ages which you know the renaissance followed on from that um it's it's a it's a we're we're right we're in the middle of the darkness right now. But but you can imagine that when you say that 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 people could create garments that are so sensitive to the body that there will be new ways to dress um, that will come out of this. I, I'm particularly curious about what fashion could possibly mean after this. What it will mean to people. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm like the idea of slow fashion that people yeah. are talking about a lot more, that fashion yeah. can become a lot more rational than it's been and, and a, lot, a lot more authentic than it's been and, and be more tuned to natural rhythms rather than the, the crazy rhythm of, of the, the fashion yeah. that existed before. Well, you know, everyone was uh, kind of uh, thinking about finding the courage to cut down a bit of pre-collection, capsule collection, and you know, and so to have also the possibility of thinking before doing, I think is going to, to, to do very, to be very good for creativity in a way, because uh, you have time to process uh, the moment. And uh, uh, so to have a slow, uh, to, to slow down the pace of the, fashion is going to to be like uh, something very healthy I think and also for a creative person to to have the possibility of seeing a collection out for more than few weeks because uh, you do all this work all this effort and then 
people tell you, ah, I went there, but there was nothing. Everything was, uh, uh, it was not my size. It was sold out. I couldn't buy it. You don't give people the time to think about and decide if they want to have something that is gone. So I think that was a bit crazy. So this, this is the ideal that fashion uh, takes stock of itself yes. and, and becomes a more human industry. Yeah, more human. that's for sure. That's for sure. And it's something, first of all, for, uh, for us creative people, because uh, we felt this need. So this is a great occasion really to, to subvert things. Do you, what do you imagine, how do you imagine you're going to approach things then, you yourself, if you've been feeling this and now you have this opportunity? Um, what would you, what do you imagine Fendi will look like? Well, you know, I, first of all, I, I there, there's been discussion and thought and you have to, uh, today you cannot just uh, be uh, a creative person, you have to have, to think about everything, so to have, uh, we have been talking about with Serge Brunswick about uh, all these issues and he agrees with me that uh, uh, we are going to, to do, uh, to do collection that lasts longer and I think that uh, this is, uh, uh, so this is something that we already decided and that we are going to put in place and, uh, and maybe also the shows that can be made in a different way it can be made even smaller or um, but if you have more time you can uh, you can think more about what you want and more carefully and uh, so maybe we um, i think that uh, you know um, we are going to see much much big difference in the future and uh, uh, now we will see what's going to happen in September if we can uh, have a fashion show or not. But I think already in September we are going to see. Uh, really? Yes, I'm well, sure. That's optimistic. Good. I hope so. Okay. I don't know what we, I don't know what we will see because my feeling is that people are going to be very nervous about being in crowds. So. Um, well, I don't know. But, you know, we we have so many possibilities today. Right. Maybe physically we won't see. We won't see it physically, but uh, uh, we are so connected that you know there is uh, uh, we can use so many many new technologies that are ready there to be explored, and it's quite exciting. I think uh, you know there is uh, virtual reality. You have computing uh, uh, generated images. You have avatars. Maybe you can send your avatar to the fashion show. Do you have one? I. Could probably make one but i don't think my avatar will will will, will be able to appreciate that you see my 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 love of fashion shows uh your your last one being a case in point is physicality of them and um you know the 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 power of the physic the physicality in a fashion show i just you know when um Giorgio armani did his show digitally and it was very sophisticated presentation obviously about the most sophisticated I mean, a digital representation of, a, of hit the fashion show he was going to show. But it was funny the way your eye roamed around the image and you wanted to look at something, but the editor wouldn't let you see that, you know, and you just realized how, how much your response is guided by somebody else when you're looking at a, at a digital image. And um, I mean, I love um, the idea of VR. I love the possibilities in VR, but then the way you produce things would have to be completely different. The way you sample yeah. things would have to be different. I think v VR is going to be very important in the next future. And, you know, I was playing ping pong in VR and I fell down uh, because I, I, I just um, put a hand on, on the table, pretending that the table was there, and then I went on the floor. And uh, because it was really, uh, I forgot that I was on a VR uh, ping pong game. I was really inside it. Uh, it was happening really in reality to me. I mean, the, the, you know, the, the fashion has been in love with the notion of storytelling. And I guess VR is such an amazing way to tell a story, to create a narrative around clothing. Um, and your, your connection with film 
throughout your career has always been really intense and Fendi's connection with film has always been really intense. So it seems like a fairly logical extension of what the house has always done, that you would become a movie maker. Uh -huh. oh, why not? It would be interesting. I would like to explore it, but yes, that's for sure. But what, you know what, all the artists you work with, like Luca uh, Guadagnino, and um, I don't know, did you ever do anything with Paolo Sorrentino? No. You've worked with him? Um, I didn't. Are, you, are you in touch with artists? Uh, what, are you, have you been able to kind of talk to people like Luca during this? Yes, yes, of course. And yeah. what, are they, what are they saying? What do, if you suggest something to them about how can we... Ready to jump for new things, of course. Yeah. You know, exciting. And we will do it. We, it's going to be great as it's for sure. So, you know, it's... Uh, the, um, when you are a movie director, you are um, used to, to, to work into... To, to, to make a real, real. So he could so. do that for you with, you, you, can do, you, can, you can show a new face of Fendi to the world? Yeah, he could, he could, he could very well, yeah. We will, we will see, we will see, we will see if he's in Milan, I'm in Rome, so it's difficult now, we will see, it will depend. What do you think an audience is going to expect from fashion now? Well, I don't know if the audience today, and they have mixed emotions, probably. Uh, they want to, to, to see a change. They are waiting for a change. They want to, to probably to, uh, to they, they need, they feel as we feel the need of, uh, of slowing down. I think they want to have uh, uh, to, 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 to know more of the behind the screens or behind of the backstage or, or what there is behind a garment. They want to know, uh, it's like what's happening in food, for instance, you know. You want to, uh, to, to know who made it, where it was made, it, how it was made. It. So I think they want to be very much involved also in the construction of uh, of uh, of, the, um, of the of the experience of the, the, that is around fashion. I think we have to show also other sides of yes. what we have been sh yes, showing until now. It's kind of, I could see almost like a couture sensibility in that with couture, yeah. you have a relationship with the designer, you have a relationship with the people who are making the clothes. I think my, my fantasy, my ideal world is that after this, fashion becomes a lot more about the people and a, a little less about the process. You know, it becomes- I, I agree. You have I agree. I think also the, all the made to order um, is going to, to have a resurgence very big. And uh, imagine now that uh, you, you will enter in the stores one by one. You will have time to talk to the person you are selling a product. You, before it was, uh, uh, it was really um, different. So today we are going to experience again things that we had lost a bit. And I think that uh, also, yeah, um, there's going to, Imagine also there is going to 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 to, to be possibility of uh, inter intervening on your garments, so you can really go. I I I talk about you know like a demi a sense of demi couture kind of uh, collections that you can do where you can really uh, have made to order, but not at that crazy crazy money that uh, uh, is couture. So I think we have to rethink also this. Do you think, do you think everybody's ready for the fashion world to be a smaller world? Are you ready for it to, are you, are you ready for the business? Not, and people, you know, that whole idea of the billion dollar business, are we going to be, this is our next billion dollar business, that sort of thing. Um, is, that, is that really applicable after this, after this a crisis like this, which has resulted after all from our rather- well, I I think that, you know, until now, 
not only in fashion but in any any domain there's always been the notion of doing growth so every season and every year you had to bring a growth mm. and i think that there's nothing much more beautiful than to have a, a consolidated business that's uh, you know and also so we cannot just uh, measure things by by growth so i think that we have to change uh, the the hierarchy of values a lot yeah so you yeah and 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 not just not just the, the values of the business but the customers values um I, I i think the word consumer should be retired now and and it, it should, we should talk about customers um because yeah. it's a relationship um than consumer um and i think people need to understand why something is expensive people need to understand this is about this is about bringing in the people behind the scenes if everybody knows how many people worked on on their clothes? You know, there's a different kind of perception of how precious they are. Yeah, yeah. There must be much more transparency, but there is much more dialogue on, also in those days. You know, where you. So I think that people will uh, will understand more of our world, and we will understand more what was uh, so the, this connection, uh, and you know, also when probably for many, many years, fashion has been just uh, related to the designer. And maybe um, the storytelling has to change a bit. Do you, do you think the idea of business as usual is now irrelevant? No, I think that today we can think that everything is going back to normality. I think it's not business as usual. Today is, uh, it's, there is a huge big question mark of, on everything. Yes. And the question mark is an opportunity to... It's a beautiful opportunity to yeah. change things and to go and to look at things differently and to evolve. And to evolve in, 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 a, positive, in a positive way, not in a negative way. No, I'm, I'm curious about you personally, because, you know, we always talk about these things when we talk about your collections, that you like a twist. You like a little, a little bit of a twist when you, when if if you look at Fendi's clothes, there's a double life in those clothes. There's there's a sort of, you know, especially in that last collection, the notion. Yes, of, nothing is like it seems in a yeah. way. Do you think that that kind of um, that kind of it's skepticism in a way and irony? There's a sort yeah. of ironic, ironic outlook. Do you think that's going to be an asset in the world after the virus? That that because you have a natural tendency to not really trust the way things look. You like you've always had a bit of a an eye for what's really happening under the surface. So how do you imagine that will evolve with what happens next? Well, I think that irony helps a lot in life. And I think to 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 see things uh, and to and to be able to 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 find always uh, a way of uh, of, uh, of of I, I don't see you I don't say you more because it's in this moment I don't feel like to use these words but I think that to be to have a positive and a light-hearted uh, way of looking at things uh, helps you a lot. And uh, I think that, you know, uh, also from my personal experience and from what I've seen happening in, uh, in, in my, in, in, in finding in my, in, in the company that I know very well, you know, changes have been always, uh, uh, we have always embraced change uh, with, uh, with excitement and uh, we have seen always them as an opportunity. And, uh, you know, if you think that uh, um, this is a company that has been through wars and terrible moments and, and from change, we have been always, uh, we, we, we have always felt renewed in a way. So there are opportunities. And 
and I, I don't remember the, the question. I was talking and I don't remember anymore. No, I, was just, I was just wondering how your natural, um, I would say natural kind of appetite for perversity, um, <laughs> how that will, whether that gives you a sort of, uh, a, a, a kind of a good perspective on where we are, that, that we, we thought we were so powerful. We, we thought we just ruled the world. And in two months, you know, we're on a little virus. Yeah. What look what happened? Nature, yeah. nature said, yeah. faster. Yeah, he, he put things in place. He yes. reminds us that uh, it's not like that, you know. And uh, you know, what, something that one of the most beautiful uh, images that I will always uh, uh, bring with me of, about those two those those days are the the image of the the animals inside the towns walking in, inside empty cities you know and this really makes me think that uh, there is life also without us no yeah, there's, there's a very good book called the world without us which was written i think in the 80s and um when i read that now it's it's just so interesting to see how quickly nature reclaims things, how quickly the air is clean, and how quickly the water is clean, um, and how yeah. how soon animals yeah. are back. In as soon as we stop our activity, yeah. everything went back. So this makes us think a lot, no, and feel that maybe we were doing something wrong, so that we were, you know, not the center of the world. Hmm? Now, how, yeah, that's the thing I'm curious about, about, one of the things I'm curious about. How do you take that consciousness forward with a huge big fashion company? How do you imagine that consciousness will, um, will infuse what you do? Or do you feel you've always sort of felt that way? That, that you've, always, you've always been a little bit, you've always stood back a little bit and just watched the parade passing by? Well, uh, you know, uh, I think that uh, we always had uh, have been very conscious of what was uh, uh, what what is uh, around us. So I think that we have always been trying to, uh, for instance, also the approach to sustainability uh, at Fendi. We 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 do we do a lot, but we don't communicate so much on what we do. Because we, for us, it's quite natural to to do. For instance, all the the um, the celeria leather that we we use, it's metal free, but we don't write it on every garment. Or also the canvas, the FF logo canvas is hundred percent organic cotton. We got rid of any uh, nylon or polyester or thing, but we. So it's something that you do because you feel the need to do it without using it as a marketing tools. So this is, uh, to me, is uh, related to, to be uh, conscious of the moment we live in, no? Yes. Um, it, it's interesting that when sustainability becomes something, when, when actually what we're talking about is, is, is sustaining Human, human beings, not the fashion industry, but not just yes. the fashion industry, not all the other industries that, that have had those sustainability issues, but now it's the notion of sustaining, it's a critical notion of sustaining life. And, and we've seen we can do it if we shut down. So it's, but how do you reconcile shutting down with, you know, well, you know, we, we understood that maybe we have to slow down. We do not, we are yes. not going to shut down, but we will yeah. slow down. We understood that uh, we can do things in a different way, so we will do it. And uh, so it's, it, we, we, are, we have learned a very, very big lesson out of this uh, situation. A very big lesson that we are not going to forget. So uh, in, in many, many aspects. So as you said before, uh, a small virus have won over everything and uh, we will, will uh, we will take uh, record of it you know um 
I've been thinking a lot about what, what Carl would make of this because Carl was, was a, a student of history and, yeah. he, and he understood the way cultures rose and fell and one culture would replace another culture or one philosophy would replace another philosophy. What do you think he'd make of what is going on now? I think he would be the first to subvert everything to take the occasion to change and to born again, as he always did, to renew himself totally. I'm sure about that. He would jump on it immediately and uh, take the opportunity to reinvent uh, and to, as he always did. He had been, he had been, it, it, his life has been an reinvention, not only of what he was doing, but also of himself. So, yeah, I w he would have been very excited about that. Did you think? Did you think about? Do you think about him much? What he would be? What would Carl yeah. be saying or doing? Yeah. How would he reinvent? I, I miss his uh, phone calls. I can imagine from home in those lock during the lockdown and with uh, irony and humor and sarcasm. I I miss that. I'm I wonder, sure he, he would have sent so many jokes about that. How would he reinvent himself, I wonder? Wouldn't, yeah. that, be, wouldn't that be amazing? To know if he should be here to, to show us, but I'm sure that uh, this is something he would have done. If he would become a shaman or something, you know, like a... <laughs> I don't know, but no, because he was very rational and so maybe... But... Uh, I don't know. I don't know, but... Uh, for sure, it would uh, it would uh, be going out of this with a with a renewed energy and not thinking in a nostalgic way about what fashion was and what uh, uh, and what uh, or, or something that will never come back again or not this. It would uh, it would not even not talk about that. And how, how, are you, how, are you, how are you feeling about, do you feel like the matriarch now, that now you're in the house with the, all the family there and you're cooking and you're, and you're doing? Yes, I feel I'm, I'm, I feel I am the, yes, I feel the, I'm the Italian mother. Basically, I feel, uh, I'm, I also feel I'm the boss. I decide what they eat. I decide uh, what's, uh, yeah, our days are more, more or less planned. They, they are very free to do whatever they want, but around the table is, uh, the table is my domain. Do you, do you, you, want, you once said you become um, the woman you are thanks to your mother. And do you yes. feel you're turning into your mother now? No, we are very different. My mother doesn't know how to cook an egg. <laughs> no, we are very different, but we have the same strength. Yeah, so different and opposite, but also the same uh, in many, many things. So um, I think the strength of my mother, I, I, yes, this is something that uh, she gave it to me. But I also like this kind of, uh, um, mat I have this maternity, I, I like to be very maternal and uh, my mother was in well, she was it in a different way. Now I know you said you you weren't being political um, when you talked about uh, uh, the, a world where women could take more power and what that world world would be like. But could you see that one of the outcomes of this actually will be an, a new importance for women in politics and culture and generally that that especially because we've seen how women have um, handled the situation. All the roles yeah. that women play in our lives, you know, the, the, the care workers in the UK and the nurses and, and all the people who have taken care of, of us. Um, would you hope that this brings about a different, a different attitude yes. feeling for... Yes, yes. I think that, uh, um, but I'm sure about that even without this situation, even without this, uh, this lesson that um, for the future, uh, it's, uh, it's our turn to, to be taken care. Yeah. 
Sylvia, I think that's a lovely point to conclude on. I don't know when I'm going to see you again. I don't know, but I'm sure very soon. Well, I hope we can do this. A bit. In, any, in any case, maybe with Zoom, huh? Eh? Yeah, let's so, Zoom. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you to you. And I'm sending Big my love kiss. to you and your family. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.